Alright, so here we are. I got my dual Magellan Explorers going on. It's doing pretty good. I, I had to turn this one down, the big one down. It's like it's loud. So this one I kept it up. But uh, I've got them both programmed for uh, relive, you know, for redundancy. And uh, so far so good. They, they both have all the programs that I've set via the computer, the GPS visualizer and DRX trailhead. Uh, that's pretty good. So anyway, so here we are. Yep. That's it. On the 105 freeway. Headed in Stoddard Wells. Looking pretty good. I got a buddy back there. He's got a 1976 uh, I think it's a Grand Cherokee or Cherokee or I don't know, Ancho. Something like that. Yeah, I can uh, let him get in front of me for a little bit so I can video him. But... Alright, it's all for now. Alright, so just started the uh, trail about two mi miles ago. I'm, I'm not sure how many miles, but I'm guessing about 500 to go. Um, just checking out these things. Uh, it it uh, said you have reached the beginning of the trail. Do you want to follow it? And I didn't realize that right off the bat. So then I pushed it. So now it's following the trail. I guess uh, it's recording it. So when I link up online, everybody else is going to be able to see the same uh, trail. So. Oh boy. That sounded terrible on the right front. I disconnected my sway bar, so this thing's a little loose. Yeah, yeah we'll be alright. Alright, that's it for now. As you can see, back there. See my buddies back there. He's got like green green lights. That's uh we call him Cat Daddy. We go way back. I think I met him back in 1996 or seven. Something way back when. Alrighty, later. Okay, so in this segment, uh Cat Daddy allowed me to import some of his videos that he posted online and in this uh, scene you see uh, his vehicle is a lot more bouncier than mine he's got uh, leaf springs all around and it is bone jarring and this is the beginning Stoddard Wells area so as we continue uh, he, he decides to record again and uh, yeah you can still see it is bouncy and and I have confirmed that it is a uh, Jeep Cherokee Chief. It's a 1976, and he's got videos of his own of re the restoration of this vehicle, and it's pretty neat to see how he swap roofs uh, with another uh, junkyard vehicle. Anyway, but uh, so he put it together and uh, he said set it up. So he is with me. So uh, we might not have the order right, but uh, in this video, you can, in this segment anyway, you can see uh, he's he's still behind me, and that is me in in the the, the black dark Z. And um, anyway, it's so bouncy. He's trying to film me, but it's it's hard to drive and film at the same time. Um, yeah, he's struggling with it. Every now and then, you see him go down to his dash, and you can't see anything. But then he pops it back up. So it, it takes a lot of concentration to do that. Uh, I, you know, we, we really weren't equipped to do a lot of video videoing, but uh, yeah, we did it anyway. You know, and that's what it's about. It's about having fun, and then uh, sharing what we what we saw. So and and then here, um, he's uh, concerned about navigation. He he's uh, wondering about this Magellan, and uh, he's following me and wondering if I set things up right. But uh, he's uh, he's following anyway, and and it's really bumpy. So he was he was happy. All right, so we veered off course a little bit, but we ended up getting back on. This thing doesn't 
have other trails so uh, you kind of have to zoom out and see where the trail is we ended up following uh, power lines but they weren't headed in our direction so we've zoomed out and uh, found it Did that little zoom feature right there that's what we had to do and then we had to find other trails to get back to this trail but uh, yeah having a good time cat daddy's up front he's got his little uh, pace truck uh, light on so we gotta go catch him all right so cat daddy's up front and he was tired of going slow and you know he, he does run a, a race school and he put the hammer down he, he was gone all I could see was that little flashing yellow light on top of his truck and, and he was gone putting up the dust and, and I'm trying to keep up you know without running into him but uh, yeah from, from here it felt like the Duke's a hazard and uh, we were on and we were gone Like the Duke's a hazard. Following Sheriff Roscoe. Dusty trails. It was earlier. Earlier it was. It was definitely colder. I got my heat on set to 64. This is 11 miles to Slash X Cafe. TR5, 7, and the TRX7 in this 
one trip. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, so here it is, Slash X Cafe. It was, uh, it was a few hiccups. Uh, there was a bunch of barbed wire fence blocking the direct shot, so I had to quickly decide, and I decided to left, and it was the correct way. <laughs> Just lucky. Destination, so. Stoddard Wells slash 1,211,182,600 23248 Yeah, you hear that? <laughs> Slash X Ranch Cafe. That's where I'm at. Alrighty. And I don't know that they're open right now. It's still early. I don't just go ahead and park. Ooh, my buddy's going on. He, he must not be handling the whoop de doos very well at all, so. Oh well. <laughs> Plus, he's got his little puppy dog. She's a cute dog. Alright. I leave my lights on. No way, did It's okay, good. Yeah, this is running pretty good. It's in the 30s right now. Damn, I need a piece of bathroom. I think they're open. There's two Christmas lights on inside. Check out this wagon wheel. Ah, there's another one there. I go. Ah, there's my buddy. I see him now. It's got this uh, yellow flashing light, which is a great idea when you're following behind him. And he's he's going pretty fast. You can see he's way up there. And you go to he slows down. You can see that he slowed down. So it, I've never heard of it, but it's a great idea. Let's uh, watch him come in. What's happening? I had to stop like two times to redo my uh, my barbecue grill. <laughs> That's where you were. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> did a little uh, off. Well, it didn't go completely off the roof, but it was like just barely hanging on by a thread. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that picture with you, you texted me, I was like, mm. well, it's, it, uh, "Okay." <laughs> I lost one of the bungee cords. Oh, really? Oh shoot! Yeah. You know, now I wish I would have brought my bungee net. So. Good girl. Oh well. Hey, hey, what year is this vehicle? 1976. 76. You know the one thing. What 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 is it? A Grand what or? No, it's a uh, Cherokee Chief. Cherokee Chief. 1976 Cherokee Chief. So. Keep you on leash. It's not a honcho. <laughs> well, the honcho is the truck version. Yeah, the truck version. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go look at the, the badge on this thing. Yeah, one thing I do want to find out on this trip, I want to find, it's a, it's the Chief S. I want to find out if I've got a locker or not. Um, based on the, when we were going over the uh, railroad tracks, you were spinning. I don't think. Both or just one? Well, all I could see was the one spinning, okay. but I didn't. <laughs> if, if, if both were spinning, then it's a locker. If just yeah, one was spinning. You were just digging in. That's, that's why I said back up and yeah. get a running start. So. Well, I thought I could just bounce it right over. It didn't want to bounce over. No. With, with it enough speed, the, you will. I should have put the skull there to cover that <laughs> rust spot. Yeah. 
But it does okay. Yeah. For the skull. <coughs> That's my Alright. We don't think they allow, we probably don't allow dogs in there. Mm, I doubt it. So we leave uh, Slash X uh, after getting some drinks at Slash X. I got orange juice, he got uh, coffee, bathroom breaks, the whole, you know, the regular stuff when you go to a restaurant. And so here we uh, immediately leaving Slash X, we kind of got lost and, and I was still learning the GPS. But, um, you know, I, it turns out the best way is when you're running two GPSs is, is to zoom out on one and have the closer one on the other. And I was doing the 3D on the other. But um, yeah, that is uh, just following along, following my dirt trail and, um, you know, bouncing all over the place. <laughs> but, um, you know, we definitely took it a lot easier once uh, we passed uh, Slash X. No, we weren't in the racing mode anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, this, we were just driving on at this point, so. Here he comes. Oh, the man in his four wheel drive machine. It may not look that steep from, uh, look at this shit. Marco's fucking crazy. That was pretty bitching, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, man. My, my speedometer says I'm doing 30, and I know I ain't doing oh. no like <laughs> So in the previous two segments, Cat Daddy uh, asked to be up front and he wanted to film me coming up the hill. So so I obliged and uh, allowed him to go up first and then uh, he filmed me coming up and this, that was on the segment between Slash X and Pisgah. And uh, that was, that was kind of fun. Um, I didn't really want to put my vehicle in the low, but uh, <laughs> it made for a lot more dust going up. Yeah, so high. this uh, Slash X, this, the Pisgah, this uh, this this segment back there, I don't know, somewhere like right around the 40 mile mark, we got lost, totally missed the trail, and we kept we kept running into these big rocks. It's like right across the trail. Some says that someone put those rocks there to keep people out. So we kept having to do alternates and then a little bit of rock crawling left and right. But uh, now that uh, we got out of that area, now we're back on the trail. We just saw a. Uh, Ford Raptor back there. It looked like they had a couple of motorcycle uh, stands on the Raptor, in the bed of the Raptor, but the motorcycles were gone. So those guys are probably out here. I saw some gas cans. But, uh, anyway, this is uh, Buddy Cat Daddy. He's leading the, the way right now. I don't know if you guys can see this but uh as we're descending this hill up ahead you can see the black areas that's uh lava areas pisgah so we're almost uh, finished with this segment 
That'll be our, our second segment. Oh, yeah. It's too much zoom. Yeah, let me see if I can steady on the dashboard. Anyway, so. it's beautiful out here. Over there, back there, we had snow capped mountains. And they say the desert, oh, it's all the same. No, it's, there's a lot of differences. Especially if you go on these roads, there's a whole lot of differences. But uh, yeah, this is a great little adventure. My cat daddy asked me to set it up, so I did. Um, I knew Magellan uh, Explorus TR5, TR7, and TRX7 were the way to go. You could plan everything out, and uh, you know, it'll. If you get lost, it'll let you know, hey, you're off the trail, so, you know, you'd have a chance to back up. There's There were some places uh, that were a little bit, like, wasn't planning on it, you know, like rocks, uh, you know, you got rain and washouts, and, but, you know, I didn't exactly see that, but, you know, hey, we're not in a guardrail world, this is, this is on your own when you're out here, so, uh, yeah kind of nice uh, taking out all the, uh, the nannies from the uh, from the trails no nanny is anyway um, talk to you later I, I guess my next uh, cat daddy I think he wants to have a emergency barbecue in the Pisgah area we'll see what happens So I'm coming up on the end of the slash X to Pisgah, so we're at Pisgah. Um, I, I think this is where they make those the lava rocks for your barbecues and different uh, decorative stuff at, in your lawn. This is the Pisgah area. There was a mine back there. They're mining uh, lava rock. But uh, anyway, so navigation device says it's got 0.7 miles to go and one thing um, I think uh, they were trying to tell us when I was uh, on the phone is that you can either start at the start or start at the end and it gives you that option and you gotta when you're selecting your trail you got to select that option. Destination in 0.5 miles. Destination in 0.5 miles. You got more lava rock over there. There's my buddy. Somebody dropped the refrigerator there. It's kind of sucky. <laughs> What's up? I'm gonna unlock. You gonna unlock? Why? Oh, I just uh, I don't want to um, damage anything. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess it's an old vehicle. I'm gonna go on real quick. See, uh, see what it says at the end of this. Okay. Alright, so he's unlocking. It says you have left the trail. Uh oh. What does that mean? That means turn the hell around, that's what that means. Yeah, that's right. This is uh, like the old Route 66 road is what this is. Still neglected. It says you you've left the trail. All you do is go pick it back up. It asks you to cancel or not cancel. And I didn't choose anything. I, as long as you back up, it'll pick it right back up. And that one says, I'm going to sleep. You're close enough to your finish, your destination. So I'll uh, select that one here pretty soon. Um, I think we 
turn left. See anything left? See anything right? I don't know. Go straight. I think that's uh, the feeder road to the 40 freeway here, the 40 interstate. Right. I had it go all the way to the end. Destination in point one miles. Destination point one. Destination slash X to Pisco. Yeah, you have arrived. All right, so I gotta look for a place to turn around here. And I'm just kind of showing you. This is the best place anyway here. Or maybe not. You have arrived. So just to kind of show you what's involved. So it says you have arrived. You click OK. Let's see. And then where's the dashboard? So you click on the little double double dash and then you click the dashboard. Journal. And now we're looking for looking for uh has got a Ludlow. Piz got a Ludlow. Alright. Choose this get a Ludlow. You click the little follow button. And then it says from start to end right there. Start to end or end to start. So you can run it backwards if you want. I go start to end. It says you've reached the select. Follow it, yes. It's got a Ludlow, follow, start to end. All right. And that's it. That's that's how you do that. Yeah, I've gotten away from my uh, dashboard again. How do I get back to the All right. Oh, you took that thing off. All right, hang on. It's a good tutorial for YouTube. Let's see. So on this one, when you're in this, this mode right here, this little like a double dash you click on that oh, and then you go to dashboard okay. and you go to journal and uh go to the next one is pisgah to ludlow this is slash extra pit yeah oh, no, we're we, gonna we're we done just with that. did that yeah so we're going to pisgah to ludlow are we gonna click stop on the top right now we're gonna go get gas and then follow get gas yeah and then uh hit start to end hardly used any gas start to end and then that's it that's it all right, so real quick tutorial of how you do that. Where's Pisga? Pisga, we we were going through all the lava rock areas. That's it. That was it. Uh, you saw that mine where they were mining lava rock for people's barbecues. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> all right. Get this dog turned around. Okay. And that's it. All right. Talk to you later. So we're reaching the end of the second segment, the slash X to Pisgah, and we're entering the Pisgah lava fields. And uh, yeah, God Daddy's taking it all in, and uh, it's pretty fascinating to uh, see and imagine what it would look like as a, with the lava flowing there. And uh, over the years, the weather has uh, deteriorated the rocks, and and uh, yeah, it's there's a lot to see out in the desert, and. You know, this is something you're not going to see from the 40 freeway passing by. Uh, it, you know, people are like, why are you going to do that? You can just take the freeway. It's a lot quicker. Well, let me, let me tell you, there's a lot to see along the ways. And it's it's really enjoyable to do. All right, over there chance. is the town of Ludlow. So, 
Cat Daddy's coming up the trail behind me. I'm about a mile out. But, uh, we're at the heart of Mojave. Hole in the wall. Here comes Cat Daddy. He's probably about just a little under half a mile away. Maybe even closer to quarter. You see all this uh, overcast? That, that equals rain up in the like in the Big Bear area. It was supposed to rain, so maybe it's raining in LA. Not raining here, so I guess that's a good thing for us. <laughs> it's probably about 48 degrees. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get gas over here at Ludlow. I know. <laughs> so we're gonna go check out the new top park. Ludlow's right there. Ludlow's right there, about a mile away. How are we looking on time? Uh, it's 1 p.m. I'm thinking we'll get gas and then uh, we'll, we'll start on the next trip from okay. Ludlow to uh, Fort Paiute. But we'll only get to Hole in a Wall before it gets dark. Perfect. And we'll we'll stop there and camp there overnight. Perfect. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. All gas. right. Yeah, gas time. All right. Hey, tell me a bolt up and spin. If I got locker. Okay, go ahead. Spin it. Hit it. Mm. Yeah, both spin. <laughs> I got it on video, I think. <laughs> So we got gas at Ludlow and uh, now we've uh, departed and um, yeah, Cat Daddy's, uh, he's, he's got the lead again. He, he got out on the trail first, so he's recording uh, just a little bit. And uh, yeah, he's, he's moving right along. We're moving right along. I was a, a little bit behind, You're but up. We, we caught up. Here comes go down the big hill. It's a pretty cool hill. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And then I hit the red one again? Yes. That's the Kelso Dunes, Mojave National Preserve. The trail goes along the power line on this, this segment. It won't always be that way. But for this one, that's what we have.
steep, sketchy. Hey, he did it better than I did. <laughs> now, mine wanted to fall into the rut, so I had to just go with it. <laughs> I know, man. You that did was it. awesome. Yeah, you did that better than I did. Yeah, I was four low. Oh, okay, that's yeah, why. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. I didn't even try it in 4i. Yeah, I did it in 4i. Yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Wheels spinning, that sucker yeah, want to go yeah. wherever it wants to go. Exactly. All right. Four low is a lot easier. Yeah, I'm sure it is. All right. This is the last segment of day one. Um, this is the uh, blood load of Fort Paiute. We, we had intended on stopping at uh, hole in the wall campgrounds and staying overnight, but just about an hour after this video, the rain opened up and it was horrendous. It was pretty bad. All right, just and a little the video, video update. We're on Christmas Tree Road Pass. Cat Daddy's right behind me. It's foggy. It's not raining. Last night was wow. <laughs> yeah, I got a little trail damage on my right rear bumper. I'll try to get it fixed when I get home. But anyway, this is Christmas Tree Road. We're taking it easy today. After the weather last night, I slept 10 hours. Wow, I couldn't believe it. Slept at the Harris uh, Casino uh, with my credit card points. It was a free night, so that was cool. Anyway, um, just to show you what it's like at Christmas Tree Road in the uh, in the fog. So. yeah having a good old time right, we're gonna take it easy we're not gonna do all the miles that, that I had planned on but you know you, you set a goal and then you accomplish what you can that's why you always want to set your goals high you know what they say uh, reach for the stars but if you only reach the, the mountains that's good or reach the uh, reach for the mountains and only reach the hillsides but if you're setting it for like the hillsides and you end up on the ground well, you know, you always want to set what you can and then and then uh, go from there. All right, so that's it for now. Just another uh, little little view of uh, Cat Daddy and his uh, '76 uh, Cherokee Chief Jeep Ch Cherokee Chief. Later. Take it easy. I just, I just had to get a photo of this uh, Christmas tree on Christmas Tree Road. We got a little baby Jesus or angel. One of the two. Cat Daddy right there. Alright. Over right now from the Christmas tree tail trail. Another little Christmas tree that was decorated. Nice. Yeah it is. It's got a little bit rougher. Oh there's another Christmas tree ornament. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Christmas tree trail. Friends 
call my Jeep Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth. <laughs> when, I, when I when I cut the top off, they were uh, they were asking if I chopped it, and I said, yeah. Just jokingly, I did not realize the whole Elizabeth Warren thing. So jokingly, I told him, I said, yeah, I chopped it one 124th of an inch. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get it, but they all thought it was fucking hilarious. I'm like, why do you guys think that's so funny? And they're like, because Eliz Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I was like, only oh, one. didn't put those two together. You oh. know Cherokee? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Cherokee chief. About as Cherokee as Elizabeth Warren. That's got to be the most decorated one I've seen yet. There's a, there's a number of them. A number of decorated Christmas trees out here on Christmas Tree Trail. People come here, they leave tributes to their fallen loved ones. But uh, yeah, nice little trail. It's pretty chill compared to what we were doing last night. Man, so we're getting to the point where there's a bunch of trees all over the place that are decorated. Just too many to count. Look at that one, bunch of, like, I don't know, wiffle balls. <laughs> That's crazy. That's cool too. Uh, toys. It is the tail end of uh, Christmas holidays. I think uh, a lot of the kids go back to school. Uh, I think tomorrow. <laughs> Today is Sunday. January 5th or 6th, I can't remember. Yeah, there's more. So a lot of kids go back to school tomorrow, so I don't know if these trees uh, get stay decorated year round or how that works. Or, I mean, to some extent, you know, you see fallen uh, ornaments on the ground, it can, starts to look like uh, littering. But, you know, for now, see, see there? More, more ornaments on the ground, but but otherwise, uh, as long as it's maintained, that's cool. You know, if you're gonna decorate a tree up here, come by and maintain it. Don't just let it sit like that and all year long and start to look messy. This is definitely different. I've never seen anything like this. Not on YouTube anyway, not anywhere. But it's kind of cool. The little trail. We've done the majority of it except for about seven miles to go. I can't remember what road is coming up. I think it's a 395. But uh, basically, about six miles out of Laughlin as you're headed uh, westbound. Uh, over there on the right you'll see this the one sign you either see it or you totally miss it but it says Christmas tree road or something like that but uh, anyway yeah I've uploaded the uh, GPX files on uh, TRX trailhead website so you'll all be able to come here if you want or you know you could just drive here know where it's at. Alright, talk to you later guys. So, so I've reached the uh, ending of the Christmas tree trail. It says you are here and there's Laughlin. There's a whole state of Nevada. Or the bottom end anyway. So the trail starts somewhere right around the six mile mark goes over here and then comes back this way and that's how it goes so obviously we're here anyway <laughs> i make a video of this because i'm like looking at this what the heck <laughs> that kind of looks kinky <laughs> but it says respect protect and enjoy your desert yeah i agree with that and somebody had to make a uh, <laughs> they made a comment about what they think about a government department. Anyway, that's all for now. Dark Seas over here. Cat Daddy is somewhere over there with the Cherokee Chief. Yeah, we're chilling today. Alright, later. So, heading 
uh, to Nipton. We uh, bailed on the trail. It was going to be very rugged and rough, especially after a rainstorm yesterday, last night. It, those trails have got to be really rutted out right now. So anyway, I saw these nice uh, Joshua trees. Uh, we're on a road to regular road to Nipton. And I just thought how beautiful uh, it looks, especially after the rain clouds. The air outside is awesome. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, don't want to tear up my vehicle anymore than I have to right now. So yeah, we're just taking the roads. There, there's going to be a little more trail uh, that we're going to be doing. But it's not going to be anywhere near yesterday. Uh, that Mojave run, oh my god. That was brutal. So, anyway, just thought I'd share Joshua Trees on the side of the road. You don't see these all over the world. So here we are in Nipton, California. These are a bunch of teepees. Uh, I like to call them the cozy cones, but I doubt that's the name of it. But uh, I believe this is uh, some kind of lodging. You can uh, rent a teepee for the night and stay there. I think they also have these little uh, green, green and uh, gray buildings. You could rent those too. It's it's like little cabins. You can rent the cabins or you can rent the teepee. But, uh, anyway. I'm a little bit of a dip in California. It's like uh, 40 degrees right now. So it's not your typical time. But this I guess it could be typical for this time of year, but Summertime, yeah, 115, that should be about normal. But uh, yeah, it's got the trees, obviously some kind of water. Any civilization requires water. But look, way down in the distance, you can see solar collecting. They have solar, uh, solar collecting stations. Catch the sun. Probably not the best time of year to be doing that, but yeah. This is Nipton, California. Alright, that's it for now. California, Nipton, established 1905. Whistle Stop Cafe. And a trading post. Nipton trading post. There I am on the road to Prim to Calico. That's the trail. Prim to Calico. So we're uh, looking at these power line uh, towers. Over there is that solar collector. We're in California side now. It didn't take long to get on the California side. Yeah, that is back there. Probably about a eighth mile back, quarter mile back, somewhere there. Anyway, oh, we're rolling. See these uh, little turnoffs? We're thinking, <coughs> we're thinking, uh, go as long as we can. The sun's got to be going down soon. Nah, whenever the sun goes down. We'll pull into one of these towers and camp overnight. And then in, tomorrow morning, we'll uh, finish off the rest of the Calico. But yeah, we filled up over there at Whiskey Pete's. Make sure we get, we're all topped off. Because <coughs> you never know. But we're, we're thinking uh, make this uh, a three day deal and take it easy. 
rough as the road is, it's 10 miles an hour any faster, and it just probably rattled the vehicle to death. So, yeah, just take it easy. Alrighty, that's it for now. Up there we got snow. There's the solar collectors down a distance. Prim. That's way over there and down in the valley. We got more solar collectors. That's on the Nevada side. On the California side you got these type solar collectors. Somewhere down there. Ah, there he is. Buddy Cat Daddy. Come on, focus. Let's see if battery's running low. it. Laters. So uh, here, uh, I guess uh, me and Cat Daddy were filming each other at the same time. And uh, this it's about 4 p.m. at this time. And um, the sun is starting to get, you know, starting to go down. It's, it's hard to see the trail. It's actually quite dangerous. But um, anyway, so I at least wanted to get over the mountain curb so we didn't end up with all the lights from the uh, Nevada side. Kind of wanted to stay in a you know starry night area, but uh, yeah, it was it was getting hard to see and it was kind of sketchy at that. So that last scene, uh, Cat Daddy was going up the mountain. I sprint down the mountain and I actually beat him to that. That's where we set up camp and I beat him there by about. 20, 25 minutes or so, and I had already started, and I had already changed because it was getting colder, and I had I was uh, starting to set up my tent, and at that point I was almost done setting up my tent and getting ready for the cold night. So Cat Daddy fired up the barbecue and uh, grilled us up some steaks and uh, made some rice, had some beers and some Gatorade, and uh, you know we we're getting ready for the night and uh, when he was grilling the, the, the steaks, we can hear coyotes in the distance uh, howling and it really spooked the dog and it kind of made the night a little bit more, you know, scary. I'm filming this because uh, you can see how the bigger one shakes. Compared to the little one, that mount isn't as robust as it should be. So if you have a TR7, I recommend a stronger mount. And I understand the TRX7 is even heavier. But it's going to need an even stronger mount than, than that. And, and I know that it does. And that'd be a good question for Cat Daddy, whether it's strong enough or not. But anyway, little trail, we've done about 20 miles in an hour. It's all downhill. Well, it seems like it, not all, but it's like a roller coaster. Very little gas and more brake than gas. And a little gas right here. It looks like we're plateauing. Alright. It's all from the trail for now. So just north of Baker, California, uh, we run up on uh, Silver Lake. It's a dry lake. 
And uh, after all that bouncing, Cat Daddy had to get out there and enjoy some of that dry lake smoothness. And uh, that's what you're seeing here. So after leaving the smoothness of Silver Lake Dry, dry Lake, um, he, you know, we, we continue on and uh, for some reason or another, he stops and the dog jumps out and would not come back in. So trying to catch me, he goes ahead and goes a mile, opens the door, the dog still won't come back in. Then he goes another mile and finally the dog comes back in and this footage Another quick you update that. from the trail. Cat Daddy's way back there. I keep having to stop for him. The last time I stopped for like 25 minutes. But anyway, um, yeah, so we've been traveling, I guess it's a little over 100 miles, maybe 98 or whatever. It says we got 38 miles to go. So, yeah, been doing pretty good. It's beautiful out here. Um, I have not seen anybody in front of us or behind us, but then again, we're moving in the same direction, so how do we know, right? It might be moving about the same speed, but in the opposite direction, we've seen four motorcycles. Uh, two of them were together and two of them by themselves. Actually, actually, I take it back. We did see one motorcycle come from behind us and, and uh, you now, so that was the only one. But basically, all I've ever seen is motorcycles. I haven't seen any... Uh, any uh, jeeps so but yeah it's it's a rough road you gotta take it slow we're doing 15 every, the highest speed I've, I've hit was like 50 miles an hour and I really shouldn't have been doing that but but uh yeah it's pretty nice out here all right that's it for now talk to you later So here we're uh, we're adjacent to the Soda Mountain Wilderness area, and um, it's the road is as you can see is really bouncy. You know, um, we're we're actually coming up on the pass of uh, the Soda Mountain. Now I realize so, um, that uh, most of the trail I've been it. showing is rather tame, but uh, this last one, oh my God, right around the what, the thirty-six miles to go. Oh my god, there was not much of a trail. It was all rock and sketchy, sketchy. It was crazy. I didn't see no trail. <laughs> Just, hey, the GPS says I'm on a trail. Let's stay on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the mountainous areas can be more... Uh, yeah, yeah, as you see that, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the mountain areas. Yep. Get your workout out. Side to side, yeah. It's just like that old Cheap Grand Cherokee commercial back in like 1996 or something. How it shakes all the mud off. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I'm driving exactly. And right, let's hang out for Cat Daddies. Probably about five miles back by now. It don't take him long at all to get away. lower it for safety because I don't want to lock myself out plus it's nice weather out anyway <clears throat> a lot of basalt basalt volcanic rock all right nice shot I can see a cell phone tower right about there and I believe the old Zizix cutoff mountain is right over there that used to be the last antenna you had when you went from LA to, to Vegas once you lost that you didn't have any cell phone coverage the rest of the way to Vegas and somewhere over there is the 15 can't be too far away somewhere over there is Cat Daddy can't be too far away <laughs> Anyway, that's it for now. Later. That's the first. <laughs> that's the first K rails I've seen. I guess it means uh, they're a little bit concerned for people's safety there. Uh. Yep. 
that fun. So when I first uh, developed that track, uh, that GPX file, I uh, was looking at Google or Earth and I saw this big blank area. It looked like a road, but once we got on it, found out it was not a road, but um, it still handled okay. And it was actually probably the best part of the whole trip because uh, it wasn't so bouncy, it wasn't so rutted out or gutted, but uh, it was different. It was like coming up a, a sand uh, a sand dune on this point. And, uh, you know, I knew I had uh, some kind of rattly noise out of my front left. And uh, what ended up being that the axle shaft had broken and uh, my four wheel drive wasn't working. All I had was rear wheel drive. But, um, you know, it's a 249 transfer case. And, so uh, what it, you're it, hearing, you what handle. you're seeing now is we bailed. Yeah, that is in my rear view mirror. We're on the freeway. Yeah, with about 21 miles to go to Calico. Um, his uh, left um, slider had come come loose, so we used some uh, some massive cotter pins I got from Harbor Freight to get him going. <laughs> it's amazing. But uh, anyway, he his vehicle, it's a 76 uh, Cherokee Chief. It was just rattling itself apart and um, his uh, tire carriers loose and anyway so he just he wanted to bail he says hey let's go to slash x he'll pay i'm like okay so we bailed with about 21 miles to go and i'm thinking we might go from slash x back to stoddard wells i don't know we'll see so anyway that's all for now maybe that was the end of our trails for this uh little excursion all right later bye that's what we did we went back to pesga so hey let's go check it out barbecue rocks come from lava rocks
something. Oh boy. He wants to go to the top. Really? <laughs> He's sliding him. I don't know. Yeah, he's going backwards already. Eh, a little too ambitious. I won't be going up it. <laughs> okay, what the hell did he just do? It just... that way. Satellite view. Yeah. Uh, Alright, I guess that's it. He's looking for a crater. Later. So in this being the uh, the last off-roading that we did, we went back to Pisgah. And um, anyway, this, it, once the sun set, that was it. We went, got gas, uh, got something to eat, and we each went, went back home. And, uh, to yeah, it was a great it. trip. <laughs> Just had a great time. Wish you were there. And that's all for uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. But well, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Just here for the time. Anyway, this is Pisgah signing off.